In this video, I'm going to um, review trigonometry, a few concepts from trigonometry with you. But let's first start with making a table to show um, how to easily remember um, trigonometric um, uh, values like a sign of something. So first, I'm going to make a table where I'm going to put sine and cosine and then on the Row, I'm going to put the angle. So 0 degrees or 0 radians, um, 30 degrees or pi over 6, 45 degrees or pi over 4, uh, 60 degrees or pi over 3, and we'll stop at 90 degrees or pi over 2. So, an easy way to remember it, of course, there is a mathematical explanation for these values, but an easy way to remember it. Put everything over 2, and then start counting. 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, and now count back. 4, 3, 2, 1, 0. And then put everything under the root. Well, just the numerators. So each numerator, we put it under the root. And here we can do a little bit of math. So Square root of 0 over 2 is 0. Square root of 1 over 2 is 1 half. Square root of 2 over 2, we just leave it like that. And the same with square root of 3 over 2. Square root of 4 is 2 divided by 2, it's 1. So the same thing happens here. And the ones with red are the actual values that you want to remember. But how long it took me to make this table and explain it? Well, less than two minutes. So if you want to, um, to know what is sine of 45 degrees very simple square root of 2 over 2 just by reading the table now the unit circle can come in handy to find um values for uh, sine and cosine like for 90 degrees 80 180 degrees and so on so if you consider here the origin then we get pi over 2 we get pi 3 pi over 2 and then 2 pi these points are of coordinates 1, 0 because the unit circle 0, 1, negative 1, 0, um, 0, negative 1, and of course again 1, 0. Well, the x value is going to be the cosine of alpha and the y value is going to be sine of alpha. So just by looking at the table, if I want to find sine of 3 pi over 2, is going to be the y coordinate so it's going to be negative one okay uh, now having this table can we find really quickly tangent well tangent of a value like tangent of 60 degrees is going to be just take a look at the table where is 60 degrees tangent means sine over cosine and just do the math uh, square root of 3 over 2 square root of 3 over 2 divided by 1 half, so it's square root of 3 over 2 times 2 over 1, so we get square root of 3. And the same way, having the sine and cosine, you can have the cotangent, you can find the um, secant, you can have the cosecant. If you have to find, for example, tangent of 90 degrees, it's going to be 1 over 0, right? So 1 over 0 is undefined. And... That's true because the graph of tangent, it's actually undefined at the negative pi over 2 and pi over 2. That's a vertical asymptote. So the graph looks like this and then it goes um, 3 pi over 2 and it goes pi and then 3 pi over 2. And again, at 3 pi over 2, it's a vertical asymptote. Okay, now let's take a look at some formulas. Well, the main, the most important formula is sine squared of x plus cosine squared of x is equal to 1. Actually, if we take a look at all these values here, if you add, um, if you add sine squared of 0 plus cosine squared of 0, you get 1. Sine squared of 30 degrees plus cosine squared of 30 degrees, you are going to get 1 fourth plus 3 fourths, 1. 
the same with each pair like that even this one square plus zero it's one zero square plus one squared is uh, one even this one negative one squared it's uh, one plus zero squared it's one so this is a very important formula and if you remember this formula and let's put it in a box because we are i'm going to use a few um i'm going to use this formula to figure out two more formulas from here so if we divide each of these by sine squared of x we get one plus cotangent squared of x equals cosecant squared of x so yet another formula if we divide by cosine squared of x, the one that I highlighted in yellow, we get tangent squared of x plus 1 equals secant squared of x. So another formula. 1, 2, 3. Other formulas are double angles. So double angle is sine of 2x is equal to 2 sine of x cosine x. The, the cosine 2x is one of the formulas is cosine squared of x minus sine squared of x. I like to remember this one. So I'm going to put this in a box and I'm going to highlight it. And I like to remember this one because if you know this one and the other formula that I highlighted in yellow, you can figure out the other two, other two uh, formulas. So it's nice to not memorize really everything and try to figure out some of them. Uh, so the formula 6, if you calculate from this one, if you write sine squared of x, it's 1 minus cosine squared of x, and you replace it in here, we're going to get cosine of 2x equals 2 cosine squared of x minus 1. So here we go, we learned one more formula. Now, if from the yellow formula we say, cosine squared of x is 1 minus sine squared of x and we replace it in the green formula we get cosine of 2x equals 1 minus 2 sine squared of x so actually we have three formulas for cosine of 2x and we are going to use the one that we find convenient um, for our specific problem another formula well if we solve this equation for cosine squared of x, we get that cosine squared of x equals 1 or cosine of 2x plus 1 over 2. Or we can say that cosine of x equals plus minus square root of cosine of 2x plus 1 over 2. And we'll decide which one of the signs we'll need to use depending on which quadrant our x is. So I want you to remember this all students take calculus means that in the first quadrant all trigonometric functions are positive. In the second quadrant the sine and cosecant are positive. In the third one the tangent and the cotangent are positive. And in the fourth one it's cosine and secant. So basically, if x is in the first quadrant, we'll just have to pick just the plus. If um, the angle is in the um, third quadrant, for example, cosine is going to be negative, so we'll have to pick the negative value. Now, if this formula, if we solve problem uh, 7, for sine squared of s, x, we get sine squared of x equals uh, 1 minus cosine of 2x over 2, or sine of x equals plus minus square root of 1 minus cosine of 2x over 2, and again, depending on uh, which quadrant the x is, we're going to pick plus or minus. Other formulas. Half angles. If in this formula, if in 8, we replace x with, let's say, theta over 2. So if we replace x with theta over 2 in 8, we get cosine of theta over 2 equals plus minus square root of cosine theta plus 1 over 2. So we have a um, half angle. 11, 
if in problem 9, in formula 9, we replace x with theta over 2, we get sine of theta over 2 is going to be plus minus square root of 1 minus cosine theta over 2. So because I use these two formulas, I'm going to put them in a box and I'm going to highlight them. And so this way we have half angles as well. Let's see what other formulas we can come up with. Sine of a plus b. Well, this is sine of a cosine b plus sine b cosine a. Sine of a minus b, I'm going to write it all out, is the same. Sine of a cosine b minus sine b cosine a. And let's do the same for cosine. Cosine of a plus b. It's cosine a, cosine b, minus sine a, sine b. So if, for example, we have to find cosine of 75 degrees, we can actually write it as cosine of 30 plus 45. We know those values, so we can figure out for an exact value for uh, 75 degrees. Now cosine of a minus b, it's cosine a, cosine b, plus sine a sine b. These are easy formulas to remember, so that's why I chose to memorize these ones. I'm going to put them in a box because I'm going to use them. And from them, we can figure out other formulas. Just look, if we add 12 plus 13, we are going to get that sine of a cosine b, it's actually equal to 1 over 2 sine of a plus b plus sine of a minus b. So we change from product, we change it into sum. But once we figure out this uh, product to sum formula, we can actually figure out sum to product also. So how do I do that? Well, if we set a plus b equal to p and a minus b equal to q, we can actually figure out A in terms of P and Q and B in terms of P and Q. So when we replace this back into the equation or into the formula, we end up with sine of P plus sine of Q equal to 2 sine of P plus Q over 2 times cosine of P minus Q over 2. So very um, easy, right? So it's good to know formulas, but try not to memorize them more to try and figure out how to produce other ones. Like, for example, if we add these two together, we can cancel the negative sine of A sine of B with positive sine of A sine of B, and we are going to get um, cosine of A times cosine of B, and I can write 18, cosine A cosine B is equal to 1 over 2 cosine A plus B plus cosine a minus b. And the same, this one is product to sum, but if we do the same that we had before, we can say that um, cosine p plus cosine q is equal to um, 2 times cosine of p plus q over 2 um, times cosine p minus q over 2. In the same manner, sine of p minus sine of q equals 2 sine of p minus q over 2 cosine p plus q over 2. That's formula 19 and formula 20 cosine p minus cosine q equals negative 2 sine of p plus q over 2 sine of p minus q over 2. So try to figure out how did we obtain those. Well, I do hope um, this helps.